what is left looks rather like a gigantic black pancake. And all they have to do after that is to wait for it to cool and to harden so they can cut it up into strips to make the bootlaces. Don't ever eat them, the father had said. If you do, you'll get ratitis. What's ratitis, Daddy? Young Thwaites had asked. All the rats that the rat catchers catch are poisoned with a rat poison, the father had said. It's the rat poison that gives you ratitis. Yes, but what happens to you when you catch it? Young Thwaites had asked. Your teeth become very sharp and pointed, the father had answered. And a short stumpy tail grows out of your back just above your bottom. There's no cure for ratitis. I ought to know. I'm a doctor. We all enjoyed Thwaites' story and we made him tell it to us many times on our walks to and from school. But it didn't stop any of us ex except Thwaites from buying licorice bootlaces. At two for a penny, they were the best value in the shop. A bootlace, in case you haven't had the pleasure of handling one, is not round. It's like a flat black tape about half an inch wide. You buy it ro rolled up in a coil. And in those days, it used to be so long that when you unrolled it and held one end at arm's length above your head, the other end touched the ground. Sherbet suckers were also two a penny. Each sucker consisted of a yellow cardboard tube filled with sherbet powder, and there was a hollow licorice straw sticking out of it. Rat's blood again, young Thwaites would warn us, pointing at the licorice straw. You sucked the sherbet up through the straw, and when it was finished, you ate the licorice. 